Have you ever wondered what's the difference between a grass, a sedge, and a rush? Have you ever thought, I don't even know what a sedge and a rush is? Well, hopefully in this video I can give you a brief introduction on what the difference between a grass, a sedge, and a rush is. There's a saying, and it goes, uh, sedges have edges, rushes are round, and grasses have joints when the cops aren't around. Now, uh, you may look at a plant and go, okay, it's got edges, or it's round, so it must be a rush if it's round, or uh, so it's got, I don't even know what it means that, with joints. Um, so we're gonna break those out a little bit, and we're gonna show that, that really it's the flower structure that you have to look at to distinguish between the three. So we're gonna start out with the hardest. We're gonna start out with grasses. So grasses, grasses are in the Poaceae, the Poaceae family. Um, everything in the Poaceae family is a grass. It may look a little different. Uh, there's all kinds of variety, but it's a grass. And one of the first things you're gonna look at to tell if it's a grass is grasses are two ranked. They're two ranked, like this glyceria you see right here. It's two ranked, so think of a lat, like 2D. So it's 2D. Um, unlike a sedge, in the Cyperaceae, sedges are in the Cyperaceae, so anything in the Cyperaceae, even things like bull rushes, and it may be called commonly a rush, but it's not a rush, and we'll get into that when we get into, into the Cyperaceae, the sedge family. Um, so the plants in the sedge family, the Cyperaceae, are three-ranked, three-ranked. So they're more 3D, like this Dilichium that you see here. This Dilichium is three-ranked, grasses are two-ranked, okay, so right away, Grasses are two-ranked. And that's why when they say sedges have edges, um, you, they, it's three-ranked, so it's more triangular, oftentimes. So grasses are two-ranked, and then their culm, which is their uh, name for their stem, their culm, has these, these knobs or these nodes or these joints, and that's where the saying that, that I just told you comes from. Um, so they're gonna have joints. But that, then the key to really knowing that you've got a grass is when they're in flower. So what we're looking at right away is these two glooms. So you have this, and what's a gloom? That's a great question. What is a gloom? A gloom is a, a bract, a modified bract. And then what's a bract? So a bract is a leaf-like structure under the flowering parts, okay, under the inflorescence or the flowers. So if you think of a poinsettia that you get at Christmas, you know, you get your poinsettia and you see that, that red mottled variegated leaf, that's actually a bract. And the flowers are really little, and uh, and those those leaves, like structures, are called bracts. Okay, so follow me here. So we have a gloom, which is a bract, a lower gloom we have, and then we have an upper gloom. So we start out in a spikelet. So the the uh, spikelet has a gloom, a lower gloom, and an upper gloom, and within that, you have a lemma. You have a lemma, and a lemma is a bract-like scale that goes, kind of tucks into that, that those glooms. Um, it is actually, there's some, there's some evidence that shows that it, it may have evolved from a sepal. So you remember uh, your basic flower morphology, you have your sepals and then you have your petals, okay? Um, so it may have evolved from, uh, from, from the sepals, um, but if not, you can still mentally put it there, okay? So sepals, and then, then we have the paleo, which is another, uh, little leaf-like structure that may be evolved from petals. So, not really intimidating here. We have the lower gloom, the upper gloom, the palea, and the lemma. And then within that, you just have the stigma and the stamen, the flowering parts, okay? The male and the female flowering parts. Um, uh, that's the basic, when we do the introduction on grasses, we're gonna go a lot more into those structures, those floral, stru floral structures. Now, here's where it gets tricky and where a lot of people get caught up on grasses. Some grasses may have, they, uh, each spikelet will have, will have one set of, of glooms, but it may have more than one set of lemma, palea, um, stigma and stamens. And so then we may have another one, another lemma, palea, and then flowering parts and so forth. And each one of those is a floret, okay? Um, so if I haven't confused you yet, and you're still watching, Good, we're gonna jump into the sedges now. So Cyperaceae, sedges. Everything in the sedges is Cyperaceae. So the sedge, the, uh, sedge flowers are um, a little more complicated than even the grasses. So we have this scale, this scale. So it's this bract-like structure, the scale. Um, and then we have 
the stigma and stamen on the scale. And that's it. That's it. That's the whole thing. Sedges are really simple. Because you know what? You don't have to be super sexy if the wind's pollinating you. Okay? You don't have to have big showy flower parts because you're wind pollinated. Cool. Easy. Okay, so uh, so then then uh, those you get cool bristles coming off and all kinds of forms and but basic flower morphology is just that. Now there is a a a genus that most botanists love, and it's the Caraces within the Cyperaceae, the Sedge family. And Carex, you know you got a Carex because they have a really special feature. They have this paper-like sac that covers that covers the sexy bits. Okay, a perigenia, a perigenia. So, um, so it covers the the female part, the stigma, the ovary, right? So think of this: um, para cover and then genium. Uh, so just breaking down the words there. So they have in in the perigenia. So you have the scale, and then you have this 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 sac that's in the scale, and this comes in all different shapes and sizes, like that, like that, like that, like that. And I don't know where else I'm going to put a picture of that. Um, so anyway, sedges are cool. Kerases are really cool. Um, so that's the basic breakdown between a sedge and a grass. And uh, sedges aren't going to have those nodes. Sedges aren't going to have those nodes that you're going to see on grasses either. So then, uh, so then we got to we got to talk about rushes. So all three of these are under the Poales order. Okay, they're all under the Poales order. So. In the Junkaceae, um, oftentimes I've, I've, I like am baffled by a lot of the YouTube videos I watched, especially when I was starting out as a botanist, trying to learn the difference between these and the misinformation that they're giving you. Um, and some of it's like mostly right, but again, we're, we're thinking of those flower structures because that's really what makes these that, that separates these. Um, but oftentimes you hear that 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 rushes, you run your hand up and they're not going to be leafy. But then you have your wood rushes, the luzulas. Uh, and they can be a little more leafy, so that doesn't really hold. Um, the rushes are usually round, usually, or flat. Sometimes they're more flat. Uh, but the, the thing that you're going to look for is on the flowers. Now, they've, they've got their flowers. They're, they're, they have their petals and their sepals, okay? They have their petals and their sepals. They have three sepals, they have three sepals, and then they have three petals. They're indistinguishable. You can't tell them apart. So in that case, we call them tepals. Okay, we call them tepals. So they have tepals, and then they have their stigma, and then they have three to six stamens usually, and some, and most of the time they have both in one flower. Okay, most of the time, not all the time. Uh, so pretty easy, and they look, they can look really gorgeous. I mean, look at some of these flowers. I mean, they're just beautiful, right? Um, so. So, uh, oh, and then, and then their fruit. So we didn't really talk a lot about the fruits and, and we'll do that a little more when we go into depth on each one of these when, I, when we do a, a video on the Cyperaceae specifically uh, and uh, the Junkaceae, which is, again, the, the rushes. Um, so those, t those tepals, the sepals and the petals on the Junkaceae, uh, they're gonna be persistent, so they're not gonna fall away. And then there's gonna be a capsule, a capsule. And a capsule is, uh, is a fruiting structure that has a bunch of seeds in it, and then it's gonna open at the top. So it's gonna have a capsule, okay, with a bunch of seeds in it. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Oh, I, I did mention that I was gonna, I was gonna talk about the bulrush. And uh, oftentimes, some people are confused because common names. So bulrushes are sedges. They're not in the, the carices. They're, um, they're in the Scirpus, Scenoplectus uh, genus, uh, genre. Um, but they're not, they're not in the Junkaceae, they're in the Cyperaceae family. And because they, they have that scale and then they have the flowering parts, they don't have the tepals, they're not, they didn't evolve with the Junkaceae, but they do have round stems. And so because of that, we commonly call them rushes. They're not rushes, they are sedges, okay. So, uh, so in that, I hope this helped give you a little bit of an understanding between what a grass, a rush, and a sedge is. And hopefully you don't just quit botany because of this video because you're so overwhelmed and uh and in the future here we're going to be breaking this down to try to make it easier for you so anyway go out botanize enjoy a cold one and cheers